Yeah, perfect. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll just kind of dive right in. So uh, yeah, uh, Odalie and I had some, some great conversation earlier today. I think there's going to be all kinds of stuff that she's going to be helping us out with. Um, one of the things she's going to do is help us with doing those sweeps of the, the Kaggle competition discussion boards and making sure if there's people there who seem like they're uh, keeners who are looking for a group, we can channel them, channel them into here. Um, I'm just quickly going through the board here. Are there any, any bits of progress that anybody wants to, to sort of report from what's, what's been going on today for them? I uh, deleted the old Google group today. Fantastic. And that's unfortunately that's, well, that's not exactly the only update I have on that, I guess. I, I have discovered that um, there is a way to make the calendar a little less obscured, but I haven't figured out how to do it with the calendar that we're currently using. Okay. Um, but if I make a different calendar, I made a different calendar in the admin dashboard and then I was able to control the visibility of that calendar a little bit better. Um, I can ask Archer to try to edit the events in that calendar, I guess, but um, I'm still having, on my end at least, I'm still having problems adding the correct list. He seems mm -hmm. to be able to do it, but I, I'm not able to do it and I've been going back and forth with G Suite support on this issue and it has been um, annoying to say the least. So I'm still trying to see what more they can do to help with that. And basically we should do whatever works at this point. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Uh, anything, anything else that's, that's a, either a blocker or something that, that you'd like some help on? Uh, let's see. Um, not really, because I think the, one of the other things on my list was something that Frankie's is working on too. So I should probably let her talk first. Okay. Um, I, I'm doing the onboarding of the volunteers and also working on the process for the experiments that we talked about a day ago, I think it was, um, just to see how the onboarding is going to work with the flow, the flow chart process that we have, um, and just documenting that. So more of the same, basically, with that. That's great. One of the things that, that um, Ogilvy has said she's willing to help us with as well um, is some of that, that connecting, so as people come in. So once we've had a chance to kind of do those, those test five going through the flowchart, yeah. that might be something for the two of you to connect around. You can kind of show her what that process is so far. And, uh, okay. And did you, did you say that she's in, involved with the Kegel groups? She, she's going to help us go through the, the discussion lists that are there um, just to, to continue to invite some of some of the folks when they're uh, on to okay so she, she has the, that. Other, the other piece that I'm about that we discussed sorry go ahead no I was just in terms of the technical uh, people you know in terms of coders you know data not data visualization but the coders and data anal analysts and other details um, do, does she know about that like more refined um, analytical needs within those groups? I think, I think there's probably going to be a little bit of onboarding in there just to get a sense of what it is that the current needs are for people okay. and okay. probably going through the tags that, that you've come up with in terms of the specific skills that are there. I, I, I think probably knowing, knowing a bunch of it, but you, you have kind of that experience of okay. what we've been looking for and what we've been needing a lot of. Okay, good. Um, one of the other things that's exciting, um, so uh, before this, Odalie was working on a, an a MIT hackathon on some people who are working with uh, on, on COVID-19 related pieces. And we talked about the possibility of her also, because outreach is an interest, um, being able to help us identify where there, uh, you know, both the other hackathons and things like that, and just other organizations that are working on COVID-19 related pieces from a data angle. Um, so that we can continue to try to to make some connections there and, and see how we can best collaborate with them. So I'm excited about that. That's great. Because um, I was um I was looking through the Kaggle some of the submissions that exist already, you know some of the data you know some of the data stuff, and I was reading through it and I was like, we should definitely see if we could just get some of these people who've spitballed a quick idea out because obviously if they're submitting basically like statistical analysis out of you know a hundred. 100 people or a sample of 150 this is this is what we worked out with this specific little detail like the people who are doing these little analysis stuff obviously for their own interest then people might be useful to try and go 
do you want a bigger problem? Do you want to join a bigger, bigger problem with a bigger, bigger solution? Because you might not have wanted to bite off such a huge problem because your skill set wasn't refined enough, or you'd be like, I can't do visualization. So I'm just going to do some statistical analysis because I can do that. And I want to practice on it. So trying to get maybe some of the people who've submitted a decent amount there, yeah. Because they'd be like, they might be, they might be working on something on their own, or they might bring something with them and going, well, well I've built this so far. And the more, right. the more things we stick at the wall, throw at the wall, we see what can stick. I mean, I know yeah, we've got yeah. like as main task ideas, but we're still experimenting about where that's going to go beyond the initial submission of Kaggle challenges. That's right. And, and of course, for any of those groups that are working on something where our resources may be of use to them, anything that we're either underutilizing or that's just our code or our data sets that we've enriched, um, making sure that people know about those and that they can tap into those if that's handy for, for what they're working on. Um, there's, we're no point also, making our, there's no point making our data a little silo that nobody can get to while trying to exactly. publish, take everybody else's public data and then stick it in a silo where no one can find. If, yes, the whole yeah. idea is we're still collaborating on a global scale with everyone involved as much as we can. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's cross-pollination. So we have a couple of groups who we're going to be talking with uh, more soon. Um, Alka, I think, did a once-over. Of, I finished off a version of the brief for the AI2 leadership. So we're probably going to send that over to, to Kyle and the other people from their COVID-19 group and ask if they can sort of push those up their channels. Um, Alk is also working on a couple of connections in closer into the leadership with AI2 um, to, to see if we can approach it from the other side as well. Um, I have a call coming up tomorrow or the day after, I think, with the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute, who also have a, a COVID-19 uh, group that they're doing. Uh, so again, there may be some, some good opportunities for synergy there. My hunch is we're going to start seeing more of those bridge channels appear in our Slack uh, so that we can be actively communicating with a few of the other groups who are working on pieces. Um, the website redesign is coming along. Rowan's done a great job of, uh, of putting that together. Um, I like the design that he's coming up with. We'll do some wordsmithing and we, we do, it, it'll relate to the press kit. There's some just core pieces of like yeah. the bullet point main pieces of what the, we do. The language. Yeah, exactly. The actual, exactly like that wordsmith in that language. And it's like, I struggle to do that on my own. I'm very much like a talk through thoughts. And then if we take, if we make enough of that, then someone can go through and go, actually, that was a nice phrase and that was a nice way of saying it. And, and then we can, yeah, we can all hack it together until someone goes stop because <laughs> we probably yeah. wouldn't stop otherwise. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and then we also have a meeting coming up. So tomorrow we have a couple of uh, folks in the, ne in the Netherlands who, were, who uh, Archer is going to be helping on to with tomorrow who, uh, who may be helpful, especially to Maya's team. We've connected Maya to one of them already. And we're also going to be talking to the organizers of TEDx, uh, a medical TEDx in uh, the mid-Atlantic as well as uh, specifically in San Antonio. Uh, so they've got some interesting stuff going on and, and they have a bunch of subject matter experts um, that, that may be interested in what we're up to. So hopefully in the I've next couple... Go ahead. I've seen a, I've seen a couple of them. Um, I'm, I'm pretty active on meetups and I've seen obviously because meetups become more digital over the last few weeks and people are still... And um, Leeds Digital Festival's about to start, which is something that I was really looking forward to. It's, the, it's like my local city, but it's a lot of tech companies talking about lots of different tech things but the side effect of it be going going online is basically manchester and leeds are almost doubling down and expanding on what they're covering and there's there's loads of extra groups i'm starting to reach out i'm starting to see and now I'm, once we've got something like i say for lack of a better word an onboarding press kit to be able to go this is what we do this is where we this is what we're looking at are you interested in coming and joining especially people who were like like say running around in t tiny little silos, it's about trying to concentrate that high level skills all into, not necessarily to one place, but cross pollinate where, where it's useful. And yeah, there's a, a Power BI group that I've seen. I've never even heard of it until you guys started looking at it. And I was like, well, I'll see what I can, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to watch a lot of things right now and see where I can, um, where, where it might be useful to reach out. But I don't, I feel, still feel a bit like I don't want to reach out until, until I'm ready to, what, until I know what I'm definitely going to say, <laughs> yeah. yeah, or I can definitely no, go. I that's, that's well, good. This is a gap, or this is a problem, or this is a you know something we're looking for. You you might be able to provide whatever. That's kind of yeah. where I'm 
I'm still still trying to percolate the whole thing in my head. No, that's great. One one thing that would be potentially useful would be we have the start for an FAQ document. Um, we're talking about possibly putting that into the chat bot that exists within Slack. Um, but Rowan's also been talking about how we can incorporate some of that into uh, a, a chat bot on the website. So if people are wanting some basic information, that's something that can be given there. Um, I think it's worth, worth experimenting with whether we do that just as a plain FAQ or whether we do that uh, as a bot. But either way, I'm looking for someone who can maybe help us with the content of that. We have some of the questions down, but we want to probably gather more questions uh, and come up with some, some good tight answers on them. I don't know if, if that speaks to anyone. I'm like, kind of so. I'm kind. Go on, go on. Go on, Shannon. I'm sorry. Sorry. What, what was what was the main theme of the frequently asked questions? Frequently asked by newcomers or by? Yeah. So I think I think we'll probably separate it into a couple of of parts. But yeah, frequently asked by newcomers, and then probably we'll want to start getting one together for frequently asked by the public. Okay. But 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 the the high priority one is the one for newcomers. We want to we want to figure out any of those pieces that that orientation wise can help there. And again, I, I trust. I mean, the folks who are working on that orientation side of things see how that fits in. If that's something that feels like it's covered otherwise, then then that's great. We don't need to add an extra an extra wheel. But uh, but if that's handy, then then we do have a, a document started on that. that more can... and more automation is going to be useful as more and more people. Start arriving if if it starts to pick up speed and more and more people try and join to support because yeah it's nice to have a, a human touch to it but as someone who runs a group with fifty to a hundred requests a day it's if it starts to, when you start to have to work out is this person real is this person a bot is this person just yeah you, it starts to become unwieldy and obviously a few of us doing it when we've actually got a specific task rather than just like someone turning up to read. Um, are there, so, so if somebody wants to jump on that, that's fine. If not, it's also something that is, it isn't on fire today. But um, are there any other, other kind of key pieces, any other blockers or things that we need to, to jump on before we, we have that little bit of conversation about uh, press kit? All right. Um, so uh, Tyler, did you have sort of a starting place if we wanted to, to begin with that conversation? Um. Uh, well, it's based on Julie and I have been chatting a little bit, and obviously she's been chatting with Arthur at some point, and I'm assuming you previously as well, because you know Julia through your work or something, as far as I understand, off route, yeah. Yeah. So she's kind of so I quite liked a little summary she obviously took from Arthur and simplified, but she said something along the lines of it's about trying to explain our ethos and philosophy and what we're doing. Yeah, which basically, yeah, the, the raison d'etre, the philosophy of the organization, but also um, act as a roadmap for what is being described as like the, the dimension where we're going to be bringing people. So we can make sure people understand how they can help if they want to help within that language we use and um, provide input. And also we need to talk about a way of explaining to organizations who want to either use our resources or give us resources, how they can get involved with that as well. That's kind of the three strands of what I feel it like it needs to say. But the problem is, is it's not a company. And the side effect of it's been a, it's been an amorphous group. It's really hard to decide how to describe that for me. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I uh, think that's it's a key part of the story. Like I think, I think uh, among the things that we want to get across for a, a press kit, a piece of it um, is that story piece because it's so fascinating of having, yeah. you know, there's this competition, there's different little groups coming together for that. And then there's Archer saying like, basically anybody who's interested in impact rather than winning a prize, you know, I'm, I'm sending up the flair for those people that are here. And then just this huge response worldwide from people coming together around that. Then there's the piece in the story that's around around how does that flash mob that comes together turn into an emergent organism, essentially, that turn into an emergent organization where we have this, this interesting top-down element that exists and this interesting bottom-up element that exists. And I think a, a key piece of that story is that we, we're constantly, not only are we trying to analyze the, the CORD-19 data, 
but we're also looking at how do we analyze and visualize and understand what it is that we're even creating because it's something that's so profoundly different from what most organizations that are out there are. Um, so there's that, there's that piece. I think one of the things we, we are trying to get across is to help people understand, because you know when we say like, yeah, we're, we're enriching court 19 data and we're, we're coming up with data visualizations and things around that, it, it means almost nothing to people. And so if we're able to say, you know, for the people who are, who are doing the, the primary research around COVID-19, that what right now, that when I was talking to a, a reporter the other day, what came to mind for it was, you know, there's this fire hose of potential information, some good, some bad, some irrelevant, some relevant, that they're having to drink out of. And what we're doing is trying to make it so that we can distill down to like, here's the cup of coffee size amount that is the right amount that that researcher needs to have access to that's relevant to the work that they're doing. Um, and it's kind of the, the best vetted um, set, of, yeah. set of articles. So, so, is, we're providing, so we're providing information to, I mean, early on it was sort of like so that the community can understand better these four topics, um, but are, are we, we're also, I mean, that community is broader than like general public. It's the professionals and the specialists. That's right. And, and, and I think that part of, uh, again, part of the story is that as things have grown, so too has the scope of what Corona Y is up, is up to. So the first goal that existed, which was that, that modest Kaggle Cord 19 challenge, um, is still the first goal, um, which, which really is to provide that information in a way that is going to be useful for researchers. Um, I mean, I think that that's, that's the reason why Kaggle was having the competition. Um, but that increasingly we're looking at, well, how do we, how do we both get that information and other relevant information uh, out to, to the public, to policymakers, to the medical community, and how do we tap into the different experts that are out there to help us understand what we should be looking at. So increasingly, it seems like we're becoming a, it's almost, it's almost like mitochondria. We're, we're becoming this, this little power factory for the cells that are there potentially from, from the data analysis side. Um, but what we need as we go forward post Kaggle um, is for the right sets of people to be able to tell us, to, to point us towards, you know, here's the things that we most need to find out about. And here's the data that maybe is helpful for that. So, some of that is, is, is the, the over big picture, but the, the direct picture that we want to get across, I think, to the public right now um, is that piece of what we're doing is taking this, this ocean of information that's there and trying to condense that on into the stuff that's most relevant and a little bit of, of vetting and enriching of it um, for those researchers. That's my, that's my perspective, and, and I'd love to hear if someone else has, has a different one because you all have been in contact with different, different facets of what we're doing. So, but what, I, what I'm hearing and what I'm hearing is that there's two, there's two main points to get across is the, this idea that, you know, it's, a, we're a global, it's kind of a very interesting volunteer organization with specialists and experts from various fields all coming together. Um, and we have to figure out something that most people would understand for that organizational form. And then the other thing is that we're, we're trying to provide both, you know, expert level and general public level information on this. Yeah. That those are the two main, if we had to do an elevator pitch, we do have to do an elevator pitch. I think pitch. so. That's right. Kind of, right? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm struggling with is trying to how to work out an elevator pitch. Pieces. Yeah. yeah, something very short, but I mean, is that, is that's the gist of what we want to say? I think so. And, and, and a piece of that, yeah, that we, so the, the aim of it is that, is providing those findings to, those, to the researchers and to the public in a way that's useful, um, that we're doing it as an interesting kind of an organization that, that is, is figuring out what it is, but has, has a very cool structure. Um, and that it's sort of this fiercely collaborative piece as well. So, you know, even though we started from this competition piece, everyone who's on board is all about how do we make the maximum impact. And so similarly, looking at um, any other organizations or individuals who we can get in touch with, who can help increase that impact. So that, that sort of snowball feeling 
in terms of what Corona Y is doing. It sort of is one of the big um, accumulators of information and, and talent and connection um, in the volunteer world uh, that's, that's working on it. So fiercely collaborative volunteer organization. Yeah. That, I do like fiercely collaborative. That's a really good way of describing yeah, it. Yeah, that's kind of like, it's very active. Yeah. It, it, because it's, it's exactly that. It's, it's, it's funny how collaborative it is. It is to the point where no one wants to feel like they're bossing anyone about in any way, shape, or form. And the side effect of that is, is everyone's like, I mean, you can do that, but only if you want to. And it's fine if you don't. We'll find someone else who doesn't. And it's it, you do what you want. It's fine. It's just like very like, just 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 gently, gently pu pushing people, but also not wanting to push anyone. And it's a very like, even I feel the the tension of like, I would like it'd be really easy to just go like, you go do that, you go do that. You you know like like the commander of a ship. If anyone could understand, you know the whole picture. But the problem is that the picture is so big and so broad and so diverse that no one can stick it all in their head and understand it. Yeah. They just couldn't. It's just too. There's too many moving parts. Nobody can keep it all in their head. Even Arthur, who started it, is still going. There's bits that have have wandered off and he can't see it anymore. But he knows it's it's existing. And and I, I described it to him earlier on when in a way that um, it, it's like a sp he started a small web. And the network's getting bigger and bigger, and it'd be very easy to damage, but we're all making it stronger by making it work better. So uh, network, I mean, the network or the web kind of idea, that collaborative, I don't know. Distributed. Yeah, it's, it's just like the network. internet. It's a di I yeah. mean, we the, the piece, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. I, think, I think we just have to get some imagery for people yeah. so they can yeah. understand this. And the metaphor that I liked that, um, that, that Arthur had been talking to someone about um, is that entomological one. That really what we are like, a lot like is an anthill, uh, but, but times a million. So, you know, an, an anthill has this amazing emergent intelligence that's there, despite the intelligence of any given ant being um, limited. Um, so it's that, except you're taking a whole bunch of these brilliant cooperative people um, with this, this amazing compass in terms of where they want to direct that bringing them together and getting this phenomenal emergent um, organization coming out of that. So, you know, if, if you think, yeah. So it's, it's sort of this, this self-organizing body uh, that, that's there where even us as the pieces that are a part of it don't yet fully understand where it's heading, but even the little bit that is what we started it for, um, it's impressive what in, in two and a half weeks uh, has been able to be accomplished in terms of, of meeting yeah. the, the clear little doll that was set. Yeah, there's some of the things that, like some of the data teams are doing, one of them described it in the main call earlier on, how they're actually starting to be able to interpret chemical, um, like chemical diagrams into data. And then obviously if you can, that's, I mean, I don't know if anyone else is doing that. I mean, obviously probably other people out there are, but this the fact that, the fact that like the data analysts have been able to synthesize what are normally very complicated symbols and been able to then throw that through a data analysis system. And if we did that, across, if we could scrape that across every bit of data that exists, like we're, we're hopefully building tools that will be able to be used in right. thousands of different ways that we can't even see yet. We don't even, yeah. we can't even imagine the ways that they could be used we just know theoretically if we make good things and keep pointing the smart people at different problems, we'll keep fixing problems that we didn't even see until we got close right. enough to. And, and I think a key part of how we tell the story, because I think we'll tell the, the story gets told in stages and there's parts of that that are the stage that we aren't telling yet, but that part of the, part of the current stage, you know, have you, if you've seen that diagram that, that Andrew made of the different, you know, we've got the, the, the layers, yeah. The NLP and we've got each of those layers. I think part of the story that we want to tell is that for each of those layers, we're trying to seed that out. We're trying to cross pollinate. So anyone's welcome to use our data. Anyone's welcome to use our code. Anyone's welcome to use our findings. But but the other piece there that's part of that self-emergent bit and that is 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 good as a draw for people is that you know other people may be working at things from a different angle and we've snowballed into this giant organization. So 
they may have a useful project to do to work on where they might they might come in to collaborate with us and we might have some resources that might be able to, to help them with that. You know, we have our offshoot projects that are already beginning to happen a little bit, but they're really we're we're coming at everything from this idea of the more everybody knows how everybody's working on the problem, uh, the better we're all able globally to coordinate around it. Which is again a network. It's just the idea yeah. of where, yeah. If yeah. we can if we can make as many connections across a, as many different ways, the whole thing holds together stronger. And it's about pulling out, you know, connecting to absolutely everything and anything that could be related and be helpful in a real organic way. But it's just yeah, it's like it's like sitting in the middle of a web and not having the full comprehension of what's at the edge of it. And you're like, yeah. I don't know. I just know my few strands that I can see right now. And and I like having a wonder around. I'm in, I'm in so many channels that I don't need to be in just to be able to go, what yeah. the fuck? What is going on in here? Just so I can I, go like... I think we should use common words for the... Mm -hmm. for the Definitely. Sound bites. So, I mean... The, the net a network everyone understands network something with open collaboration fierce fiercely i think we should just i i believe it should be something very simple absolutely mm -hmm. and then you know when we when archer talks to the press he can give his examples and we can talk about organic stuff because I, I just don't know that it's gonna, that's not gonna land with, I, I'm not saying it's not gonna land, but I, it's just more yep. tricky with if people are not as like-minded as us and they see it out in the middle of all, all the other mess that's out, it's, it, it may be better just to use common terms mm -hmm. that still fit with what we're trying to do. And I wonder, so it seems like, I think we've had good discussion around it. And the next piece is just starting a Google Doc, putting in, you know, Tyler, if you want to put in your thoughts around yeah. these pieces. Yeah. And then we can kind of all add and refine from there. Ogilvy's yeah. all the thing. You're, you're, you guys are in sync. <laughs> she just said that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so Ogilvy was just saying that, yeah, for this description, perhaps we can draft something yeah. in the doc. Uh, tweak yeah, it together. I'll, I'll, th uh, I'll throw it in and then, yeah, just put the link up and let everyone eat away it and throw it. I mean... I have loved, there's, there's times I've done this before for different things and I've like, when you can get like eight people on one document, you'd be amazed how fast it gets written, but also yeah. how fast you bounce off of other people's wording. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. that's such a thing. And it's just like, it's like a thing that gets written so much faster than one person's brain. Again, it becomes an emergent yeah. thing that everyone interacts off of each other's interactions so fast that you can't even explain it. Yeah. They don't have to agonize over it then. <laughs> no, and it also so, feels what, less. You feel you feel less ownership, so you feel more free. Because if yeah, you write it, you're like right. everyone's going to judge what I do, and it needs to be perfect. But if you're like, "Fuck it," I'll just throw my ideas down, and we'll just filter and tidy, and no one's going to be ashamed if that bit gets tidied away. Because if somebody chopped a bit of mine away, I'd be like, "Fine, it's whatever." And it's just yeah, yeah. It, it's that distributing the the workload, but also distributing the fear of not being good enough. Absolutely, I love that. Um, which, which, which again speaks to the whole thing that we're doing, because what we're trying to take on is a monumental thing, and again, um, imposter syndrome is rife within the group. Um, one last piece I'll mention about this, and then we can probably wind down, is You've got four minutes. One of the things that uh, that Ogilvy is going to be helping us put together is a um, uh, a document, uh, sorry, a Google folder where we can take all of the slides that Brandon's made, some of the things that Andrew's been making, all of these different little pieces and just have a, a hodgepodge that can be put together both for people's individual presentations, but I think something like that, that we can make some, some easy to understand images of what we're up to available to the press is probably a handy thing so that they can- Almost like memes. Exactly, well, yeah. yeah little... We've got a space to put that. Should yeah. I be adding anybody permissions on the Google Drive? I would have uh, yeah. to take Google Drive space because I've, um, I've just been doing logo variants uh, high contrast, low contrast variants, black and white variants, just because I'm like, I know as a press kit, you need to be able to allow for a, a website that's dark, a website that's not. It needs. To, I'm like, well, I'm just going through and doing that. I still don't like the logo. I think there's some, like color wise, I don't like the red. I just don't like red. I feel like it's, I feel like it's too conflicted. It's too I wouldn't have called it red actually. I would have called it magenta, but that could just be me. Uh, to be fair, I run um, screen filters on most of my screens most of the time. 
um, blue filters. So everything looks a bit redder than normal. Only times, only when I'm in design programs does it look different. So, but yeah, the fact that I just, I feel like red's the, the wrong color for it. But at the same time, it also feels like the enemy. So yeah, it kind of makes sense. What, what color would you do? I actually really like, um, somebody put up a, 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 I can't remember what it was now. Somebody put up a, a three variants that she came up with three different logo variants with colors and three different text variants. And I liked, I, I am, I work with people with learning disabilities and learning, learning difficulties and language and type is really important to one, especially my long-term client. He's a type of typographic note. He loves it. He loves really complicated fonts just because he loves it. But, um, but it needs to be really clear and concise because we want to have it as available to anyone as possible in like, it needs to be as legible and as clear as possible. But I, the colors wise, there was a couple of like, I liked orange and like the sort of turquoise blue backgrounds and stuff. Cause it just feels neutral enough to be easy to read, especially in that color mind, color blindness and that sort of stuff. But also orange speaks more to like action and excitement more than red, which speaks to more like anger, aggression, violence, blood. Orange or, is fear. Yeah. Like, like, are we are we emphasizing the disease and the fear and the, the Which, exactly the red the red feels more like blood and if you just even yeah. if you just drop to an orange it feels more like action and doing and it still kind of represents the same thing but I just and in color theory terms it feels a little bit more like red is just too strong for this it's perfect for things like um, YouTube and that sort of stuff where it's like bang in your face but we can't I just like the I like the the touches. I also like the variant where there was two different colors just because I liked it, but other reasons than that. So I wonder what we might want to do is throw something onto Trello, throw a card there in terms of, of just an exploration around the, the design and the branding piece. Um, mm -hmm. Because overall with our branding, that's something that we need to, to readdress. What, what exists in terms of a branding guideline is essentially something that, that when the second day of being here, we needed something. So I, I, I rushed something together. But, but now that we have a little bit more space, we should really go over that and give it yeah. a, a lot more, more polish and thought. Well, yeah, we should be wrapping up now. Yeah. Well, thank you all uh, for, thank you for, for coming being on here. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep on going. And my hunch is that there'll be a bunch of new stuff to, to share uh, even in the morning. You'll have seen probably Arthur's piece that we just were, were on TV now. So there's some nice shots there of him on Fox 2 wow. News. I know I was telling my girlfriend that we were on, well, telling my girlfriend earlier on that we were on the, um, what's it called? 